For May the 14th, 2021, we talk about Resident Evil Village, Unrailed, and we ask you about games that are not more than the sum of their parts. Welcome to Level 371. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Mysmith. I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, David. Hey, good to be back. Yeah. What's going on, bud? Um, so not a whole lot. Um, I sometimes gonna be talking about uh oh uh, for the grind is I went uh Full full nerd uh this past weekend and attended a LARP event. Mm. And Ooh. so uh most of my life recently has been like preparing for that. Uh so yeah, that's kind of been been my thing recently. Neat. Did this involve like a lot of outdoor time? Uh yeah, a lot lot of camping, lot uh in preparation, a lot of sewing. Okay. So Oh nice. Yeah. So you you we went full on like costume and stuff too. Nice. Uh, do, do you have? See, a... I want to go ahead. I want to do a LARP that is not like fantasy woods themed, but is like grungy dystopian city themed. Oh no, that do... that was uh, what happens literally right after we left. The next group was a group called Aftermath. That is that. What, hmm. is it? Dennis? If you just want to visit Seattle, you can ask me. You don't have to <laughs> drop clues. That's what I'm saying. Just pick a city, do it, and just see how long it goes before. Uh, the you know the locals realize that you are out of place. Yeah, just do a do do, do a shadow run LARP. Just break mm-hmm. into a whole bunch of banks and stuff. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we we just had a shadow run LARP, and now we're going to have you know three dollars dollar gas. <laughs> we did just have a shadow run LARP, yeah. Uh, but they Guys, said, but they said oh, they ahead. were sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, what right. a weird story. Uh. Cool. Yeah. Do do you have a sewing machine, dude? Uh yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I I tried my hand at sewing a mask. Uh, and <laughs> it's kind of like when like whenever Homer Simpson tries to make something, you know, like mm-hmm. oh, just like, look at my spice rack, and it's just it's just two pieces of wood like nailed together. <laughs> it was pretty <laughs> much just like that, and I was like, ah, uh, my mom's sewing machine has kind of been in the family for a while, so I'm not going to touch that. I think I'm just going to wait and buy a mask. <laughs> Sure. when they're available sure. this was back at the beginning of the pandemic when there were just no masks at all like oh, yeah. shirt days yeah 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 and, you know the the the, the battle bandana days yeah um nice uh what you been up to ben oh a lot of work in the past week but then also a vacation on the horizon so yeah Neat. Do, do you know what you're gonna do or is the vacation right now just defined as not work I I am going down to Portland for a week for one of my friend's weddings. Cool. So that'll be a nice break. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh Dennis, how about you? Um, I fucked up, you guys. What? I did Uh-oh. I did a real bad uh, What'd you do? last night. Should I stop recording? Uh, no, no. It's, <laughs> I, I'm I'm at peace with it. Um Luke lost a tooth yesterday. Oh big exciting event. Packed it away Ow. under his his pillow, and the tooth fairy uh, neglected their duties. Oh, uh, so he he burst into our room first thing this morning, very distraught. Oh <laughs> no! And he had he had made a path of toys on his bed leading to the tooth, like he had decorated for the tooth fairy. Right, and, uh, right. And we just spaced on going um, in there. Hey, if any kids are listening, can you can can you go out of the room? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so what was the story that you that that you that you said, and, and also who specifically messed up? <laughs> because... the, the unclear. We, you know, we uh, we we share those responsibilities. Okay. Okay. Um, but uh, the parents. This is a I think, good is husband, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or he's a bad husband, and it was his, completely his responsibility. That, that is <laughs> <laughs> one. Of- one of two possibilities. Uh, no, so we, we were asked, oh, wait, you got to be surprised too, right? 
uh, like, what, what what happened? What do you think? And he's like, yeah, I made a path of toys. And the, the, the tooth cap was under, he put it under a hat, I guess. Okay. Uh, and we're like, oh, you know, that's probably, probably what gotcha right there was oh. the hat. That's very confusing for tooth fairies. Yeah. Uh, the, the tooth fairy doesn't <laughs> fail you. You fail the tooth fairy. Right. Well, that's kind of how we spun it. We just use nicer <laughs> words. Uh, and that seemed pretty effective. So. Okay. <laughs> what, what was what, was this his first tooth that he lost? Oh no. We're, so I don't feel too bad because we're on like five or six. Gotcha. Okay. Like All those right. things are dropping like flies. But he does have the very cute uh, right now the two front teeth missing. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Going on. So he constantly is sticking his tongue out through the teeth. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's very, very excited about that. God, I just remember uh, that enough. being so painful. <laughs> oh, losing a tooth? Yeah, or just having a tooth that was loose. You know, you'd get it like twisted in a certain way that was like stabbing yeah. into you, but you couldn't untwist it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you could go the way I I went and just like I lost a couple of my tooth uh, baby teeth, but most of them had to be pulled. Oh wow! Ooh. So yeah. Between four wisdom teeth, two adult teeth that just weren't fit, and a bunch of baby teeth, I've had 15 teeth pulled. Oh, oh my god. Hey, um... Yeah, so I'm wait. so sorry. <laughs> is, is Luke going to get $2 then tonight instead of one? We might have to add some apology money in there. You, well, you can't, you can't seem too guilty about it otherwise he's going to start asking questions but he probably right. does deserve some like you know thank you for your continued business we we hope your next experience is better um, my cookie. Probably, yeah. well yeah wow. Go, dollar- going like full full yeah the the tooth fairy works for a corporation and has a <laughs> pr department it's, it's just a job man <laughs> we hear you we're listening <laughs> it's, it's like it's like recycling it was set up as this big great thing but really it's it's not functioning the way it's supposed to and you right. have to pay them to keep the thing going mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 like recycling uh there's a country that you just send all the teeth to and then when the country that you send the teeth to says no more you have to scramble and find someplace else to send the teeth <laughs> you make a teeth island in the ocean <laughs> just a big gyre of molars oh, no. mm-hmm. i think i think i played that mario level oh, i was gonna say i'm pretty sure i've seen this on hex screen <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh i don't have too much going on i've not been feeling too well um i like lost my voice over the weekend and stuff so just it, puttering around the house and and all of that but uh i did manage uh to play and beat resident evil village so holy shit yeah nice. it's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an eight hour game <laughs> I was like hey cole can yeah. you send me Resident Evil Village and your <laughs> PS5? Um, <laughs> that's not an honest request. Okay. <laughs> I'd be happy to send you the game. It's the PS5 that's the problem. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you get a physical shoot. copy then? What's that? I, I was just... The punchline was I wanted Cole to ship me his PS5. but no, I'm, I'm just throwing it out because it's, you know just an eternally true statement i'm writing down right now for titles it's the ps5 that's the problem <laughs> you know, at any true. point since its launch you could have said that and it would have been an accurate statement yeah yeah Dude, i'm i'm copying from a reddit post but on playstation's website it says play has no limits like <laughs> except capacity of yeah the PS5. except except stock yeah Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, I also like shipping a PS5. Dear God, I think it'd be easier to ship myself. (laughs) (laughs) I will fly and drop it off. No, uh, no, just going to get one of those big crates that says fragile on it. uh, Drill a couple (laughs) air holes, you know? Um, Actually, uh, I need to track down. There's a story recently about a guy who did that. (laughs) Did he die in a distribution center? (laughs) Uh, No, he almost died, but did actually make it back. Huh. Well, lesson you know what learned. they say almost dead is saved a couple bucks. Yep. Yeah, it was it was like he he went to was doing some some sort of like it wasn't Peace Corps, but like something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and ended up in like, I don't know, Australia or somewhere and just got crazy, crazy homesick. OK. And uh, so tried to mail himself back to like the UK or somewhere. Huh. Oh, it was and transatlantic. The, Yike. It it was something like that, and then they actually shipped the package by mistake to like New York or something. Like it was <laughs> it was a whole thing. So huh. he would have died if the plane had gone across the ocean. 
I'm not sure. I'll have, I'll have to try to. Uh... <laughs> oh yeah, man! Right. Oh well. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that that's what I did, and I'm kind of impatient to talk about it. So uh, I think that we should do the regular kind of show. What with the grind, the multiplayer, and the end boss. And why don't we get started with... To be fair, if you're impatient to talk about it, we should not do the regular type of show, because that means we're going to segue all over the place and, like, roundabout get there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like we should do the better type of show. <laughs> I mean, just... just it, it, I want to let you guys talk about... To, to, to talk about uh, your, your games, too. Oh, oh, you delayed it anyway. No. Uh, why don't we get started with... <laughs> The Grind. The Grind, where we talk about games we've been playing over the past period of time or so. I'm going to ask the uh, uh, Assemble Quorum here. Uh, I would have gotten permission from Jala in writing if I thought to ask about this before. Is it okay if I break the usual practice of having the person who was not here last week go first? David, are you okay with this? I am okay with that. Okay. Um, yeah, I want to talk about Resident Evil 8, uh, also known as Resident Evil Village. Uh, um, so I'm just going to say right now, it's good. Uh, it's good guys. I played it. I beat it. It's, 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 it's good. Uh, but I want to like lead by asking you guys what you want to know about it because I I could just start gushing, but I'd rather answer your questions as someone who liked Resident Evil, uh, four through six and doesn't like amnesia is a game I should play. Yes, there is a tremendous amount of variety here. Uh, this is closer to Resident Evil 4 than Amnesia, um, you know, or even like Resident Evil 7, which had those, you know, kind of prominent pursuit based things, especially early on, um, kind of in the first of the major dungeons that you go to with uh, with Jack Baker uh, kind of chasing you around. There is some of that here. But like the village that you're in acts as uh, kind of a hub world. And what you are doing is you're going after kind of the four lords who like run the village and do experiments on people. And each of those four lords kind of has a different um, uh, style of play that's associated with them. The first one that you go do um, is the one with uh, Lady Dimitrescu, the uh, the tall uh, vampire lady. Uh, but that's only like the first couple hours of the game. It is its own Resident Evil dungeon that, you know, kind of mimics the puzzle box spaces uh, k- k- kind of thing that uh, older RE games do. And there's a little bit of having her chase you around and you're disempowered about it. But that is a very small portion of what's going on here. Uh, it does a lot of switching back and forth between things like there's some escape room stuff. Uh, there's a lot of gunplay. Uh, in this i think that if you like a more action-based game they have moved away from re7's i mean re7 is good and scary but like the combat was not necessarily a thing that was tactically interesting this has Hmm. a good amount of encounter design enemy variety uh and neat arenas uh that you can go through and like really good boss fights. They've upped the boss fight game as well. So I would say, yeah, if RE7 scared you off because it was more, you know, kind of closer to a, um, you know, amnesia outlast PT kind of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is still first person, but it is uh, uh, kind of playing in some more familiar spaces and very kind of obviously cribbing from the best, uh, the, the, nice. the best of those in the past. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you were going to ask something, Ben? Oh, no, I was just saying, uh, I was, I was, I was, I was reiterating what you were saying, but I forget even what I said. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you touched on it, but the, like the, the gunplay and the action elements always feel like the most undersold things in previews and trailers and stuff. Right. Um, they, they lean hard into the creepy factor. <clears throat> um, so I'd love to hear more about that and, and just kind of, when you decide to open fire, uh, what's what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the enemies are, um, like I said, there's more variety to them. I don't want to spoil everything that comes at you, but the most advertised uh, enemies and the ones that you're going to be fighting probably the most, uh, including in some of the like hub, you know, some of the spokes that you go to off of the hub. Um, but in the village, the hub village itself, uh, these lichens, uh, these werewolf type enemies uh, that are unlike anything that I've really fought in an RE game before, 
like the closest thing would be like maybe the hunters um and some of the like um some of the smarter enemies and like re6 um mm-hmm. uh, uh do they're very mobile uh they are smart and they hunt in packs uh and they will like lay in wait and ambush you um like any resident evil game you kind of start out um you know really conserving your ammo um but eventually you do end up getting access to both crafting like in re7 where you can um you know choose which ammo you want to make with the resources that you end up picking up uh enemies do drop um refills of ammunition and uh you know uh crafting materials and things like that and um you can also stop at a merchant and buy um some stuff very similar i mean almost exactly like an re4 where is it is it the same like badass no. trench coat uh coat guy because that guy was the true hero <laughs> <laughs> no it's a really good character uh he's a kind of kind of a creepy guy for how like genial he is and how helpful he seems and you think oh he might actually be you know in on this and he acts a little bit like a quest giver too like giving you advice it's this guy called the duke who is gigantic uh he appears to be like if he stood up he would probably be about 12 feet high and also he is um incredibly obese but that is never made mention to uh which is nice it's not like a fat joke or anything it's just this is an otherworldly physique that you have here um but uh but he uh operates just like the re4 um uh uh the RE4 merchant uh, being able to, you know, you can buy stuff, you can sell treasures, uh, you nice. can combine treasures and things, and you can you can also upgrade your weapons as well, just like an RE4. So does um, how does the game like the game's what set in Transylvania or something? Yes, it is, uh, and you're fighting werewolves. Like, does the game justify that at all, or? Oh yeah, there's definitely like hand wavy stuff um with um you know because they because they always have a virus or a parasite that explains everything. That is all uh explained in the goofy Resident Evil fiction. Um, you know, it's it's never, you know, they have their explanation for why you haven't seen stuff like this elsewhere. But like I guess the previous games, like the explanations were consistently dumb. But they were fairly, I don't know, believable. Whereas this seems like going like, oh yeah, these just happen to directly correspond to like, you know, uh, you know, pop culture uh, monsters. Like, do do they pull that off, or does it come across <laughs> as just like, oh, just silly? I would say it definitely rides the line between pulling it off and it just being silly. The explanation Mm -hmm. that we end up getting is that the mist that we have from this region could, you know, could have sprung from the natural phenomenon that is being exploited in order to make this a, uh, to, in order to make this into a, uh, um, you know, bioweapon kind of deal. Right. Sure. Yeah. But I mean, the, the actual story is, Capcom decided, hey, wouldn't it be fun to wet fight werewolves? And it and it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, along those lines, uh, how many things do you uppercut? Um, you don't really have an awful lot of like melee uh, ability on you. So, I mean, Chris is in the game, uh, but it's not the uh, the main character that you play. You're playing as Ethan, uh, the main character from RE Seven. Um, kind of the setup is that after the incident in Louisiana, he and his wife, uh, had a kid and, um, eventually moved to, uh, Europe, moved to Romania to follow, uh, Chris because Chris had said, okay, I'm going to protect you guys to make sure nothing bad happens. However, bad things happen and the kid goes missing and Ethan goes chasing after her. Um, so Ethan is not the, uh, heavily trained guy. I mean, like in RE7, he is just a regular dude. I think he's like a systems analyst or something. Just a, just a big fucking nerd here. He has had a little bit of military training, which helps justify a little bit. Some of the, um, some of the bigger guns you're able to use, but like your melee cap- capabilities, uh, kind of, ex- you know, are, are pretty much just, okay, there's a knife you can use if you want to. And also there is the block and parry system, uh, which allows you to 
either block a, a good amount of damage that's coming in, or um, if you block at the correct time, uh, you can uh, do a shove, which will knock somebody away and stun them. So you can do uh, so you can do some attacks. You're not getting an think- awful lot of you know Chris Redfield uppercuts and wrestling moves. You're not getting a lot of um, uh, Leon Kennedy suplexes. So have they have they gone away from kind of the you know like laser pointer you know take out the knees uh, based combat? That's still there. <clears throat> um, the enemies are still reactive to where you shoot them. In fact, more so uh, than they were when you fought enemies in RE Seven, mm-hmm. uh, because they were those uh, shuffling mold monsters who you know they were just kind of gooey, so it didn't really matter if you shot them in the leg or not. Uh, these yeah. you know uh, headshots still matter. Uh, shooting enemies in the legs still matters. Um, I would say it is de-emphasized somewhat because the combat is faster than it was in RE4. Not as fast mm-hmm. as RE5 or RE6, but it is still here. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. More questions so here. Yeah. <laughs> when it, how 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 did you binge it? Was it like a one to- one shot straight through? Kind of chop it up into pieces? Were there natural breaking points? So there are natural breaking points because of that structure, which is weirdly like Dark Souls, where you have like the <laughs> intro that you do and then you get the quest like, OK, here are these four things that you need to uh, uh, beat in order to get th- to the end game. Uh, there were some natural um, breaking off points. So like I went and got it first thing on Friday. Uh, we had some recording to do on Friday, so I didn't get to play as much of it as I wanted to, but I did like the uh, uh, the intro. And then I did it kind of over the I did like one chapter the next day and then like two each on Sunday and then like during uh, Monday during the day. So, yeah, like it went down really, really smooth. It is very well paced. Um, You know, it gives you a lot of incentive to see like what is next around the corner uh you know through i think just really good presentation but also the fact that like i thought i knew more about what was going to happen in this game based on the demos and the marketing materials but like stuff that you have seen um is really just from the first quarter of the game like once it got to the point where like everything after this is a mystery it was like dang dude i need to see what's behind the next door here uh because it might be sweet because the things i've seen before are sweet Mm-hmm. I, I assume if it's, you know, if it's broken up into these four lords, the first one is giantess vampire. The next one is little person vampire. Uh, <laughs> then there's like really skinny vampire. And and it sounds like you've already found really fat vampire. So we're covering, <laughs> Only, covering all our bases. Oh, I mean, so let's just let's just say it's not as many vampires as you would think based on based on what you've seen. Uh, they, they they end up widening the gamut more. I think in Transylvania, I think you, you're like a vampire by birthright. So, <laughs> I th- I, see, I always feel bad for like making a joke like that because I know that we ha- like at least at one point had some listeners in Romania, and I don't know how much right? I don't know how much they owned that or how much uh, that's like. Uh, geez, kind of like a tired thing. It is. It is easy for me. I will say this: it is easy for me to uh, when talking about these horror tropes and. Uh, properties that i that i love it's it, i i find myself forgetting the trans transylvania as an actual place sure it, so, it's got to be an unit thing maybe <laughs> I, it's probably varies by individual yeah so so with that um so i've i've a friend who's um you know re- really passionate about have the uh i guess the romani uh you know kind of their experience and you know trying to get um people to you know not be as um stereotypical in their uh depiction of them that sort of thing does any of that come into the game i mean not that i notice but i may not have the sensitivities of somebody who has lived that experience to to you know to, to use particular language about that uh there is very little that i would associate with like I would say, oh, yeah, that's playing off of Romani tropes like the sure. merchant travels around like in a wagon, but he is not otherwise coded um, in a sure. way that sure. would like look and feel problematic, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. looking at the village that is here. Like I would say, oh, this is supposed to take place in 2021. No village that looks like this would would or could actually exist outside of like 
I don't know, whatever the Romanian equivalent of like colonial Williamsburg would be. So there, <laughs> there, like, there is a little bit of like your character walks into this uh, very outdated and, you know, one word that you could use, you know, especially early on, you know, this insular uh, a, a culture that is outside that is afraid of outsiders or, you know, derisive of outsiders. You could say like, oh, yeah, this is being portrayed as like a backward place. I don't know that that is being done with any particular malice. I think that that is being done to evoke, you know, the the the, the fearful villagers that live in the shadow of a giant castle where a Dracula or a Frankenstein factory might be. Sure. Probably. What you've probably. actually walked into, sorry to ruin the twist, but what you've actually walked into is a Transylvania LARP camp. Ooh. And uh, that's 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 uh, the M. Night Shyamalan twist to the game. Mm, it was modern day all along. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, do they, what is the current state of the timeline in Resident Evil? Like, do they ever have seven or eight, uh, you know, ever grappled with the fact that like, what, uh, I think Shanghai gets nuked in at the end of six and there are, there are some, uh, nods, uh, to that, uh, at the, you know, in some of the imagery that is shown, um, and also like in the first, uh, not in the first in RE seven, you can find a newspaper that mentions, uh, the incident in Edonia, uh, which mm -hmm. is the European city that gets hit in RE six. Um, yeah, that, that, that is there, but it is not necessarily like dwelled on any more than like, uh, you know, the raccoon city incident is mentioned offhandedly. I don't even know if raccoon yeah. city is mentioned in this. I think that the just the, the the general like uh state of the world is that uh bioterror and uh uh BOWs, uh biological organ organis organism weapons or something like that, are you know, it's kinda like I mean it's it it's weirdly convert it, it it has been converged with Metal Gear for a while. That continues mm -hmm. to be the case where instead of Metal Gears you have uh, different amoral companies researching uh, pathogens and also trying to make super soldiers and tyrants and stuff. When do you think this game's going to get remade? <laughs> Six months ago. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, to, to, to that question, I'm going to segue that into saying this is a gorgeous game. I am playing this on PlayStation 5 um, on an OLED 4k television with hdr it's like ideal conditions for it so of course i would say it looks good but it's it's gorgeous um it looks amazing especially uh kind of those opening areas in the castle where everything is like gilded and fancy and shiny and stuff uh it really does uh look great and then conversely looks horrifying when you get into some of the more explicitly gross uh areas as well so do they, is there an element of looks good in motion? Like, do they take advantage of the hardware power in terms of like having a lot going on at once? Mm, not more so than before. Like it, not in a way that like necessarily impacts play, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not like doing physics modeling on a whole bunch of stuff that like factors in, but I think that, you know, it's possible that the uh, hardware is uh, making it, you know, easier for them to do interesting, uh, like enemy behavior, I would say, because they <laughs> like they, they use, especially when you're out in the village, the enemies use every part of the surface. They're very nimble. They, uh, will bound across rooftops and stuff like that. Very cool. Yeah. Fighting, fighting Spider-Man. It sounds like, I mean, no, the Spider-Man come later. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I will not comment as to whether or not there are Spider-Men, um but uh and spider can mams. A, hmm. <laughs> uh can you move a slider to say how realistic the spider-men look yeah if you do it all the way to the bottom it just looks like tofu from re2 just the big cube walking around <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the uh the screenshot from into the spider-verse with the uh miles morales in his fake costume next to the real deal peter parker <laughs> uh and it's just a slider between the two of those yeah. <laughs> Um, any other questions? I don't know that I have an awful lot to say on top of what I have already said other than, you know, I remarked on this on Twitter, but this, you know, uh, it, it does what I would like a sequel to do, which is refine and expand. Uh, this definitely does feel like they took the kind of 
more intimate um, experimental stuff from RE7 and took the stuff that worked from that and brought it kind of back into something that resembles things from across the entire uh, the entire series. This feels very Resident Evil-y to me, uh, if you take yeah, the entire it, it series into of... account. Greg, as someone who skipped RE7 for this reason, I guess maybe I don't know, but it sounds like it's a little more true to the series. The original one is very true throughout most of it. It is operating to try and be true to like RE1 specifically. Uh, this hmm. is calling back to and being more of a piece of the rest of it uh, for you. So like if people say, hey, I, I haven't played Resident Evil 7, like should I play that one? I would say, yeah, because the game owns. But if you find yourself just like, I'm just I'm just really not interested in that. They do have like a, uh, you know, get me up to speed uh, cutscene that you can watch that explains oh, nice. the, the important plot developments from RE7. That's cool. Yeah. Which is just, you know, a nice thing to do. Like, I watched it because, you know, though I've played that game four or five times now, it is nice to know. Because usually the, uh, the the choices that they make in those getting you caught up uh, montages uh, end up telling you what is important. So you can kind of guess what's going to be coming up in the story, which is neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Yeah. Resident Evil Village. It's good. Glad you enjoyed it. Are there, well, now that you've finished it, are there any hooks of like play play through and find all the vials, or you know, are there, there any uh, replayability concessions being made? There's some of that. Um, there's definitely so like they have done what I like, like w which is what I think the uh, uh, the the achievement system in games is supposed to be for, which is actually turn to those into end game challenges that jo that don't just have rewards for your um, you know profile on your systems dashboard but actually have mm -hmm. like you get a currency that you can use uh to buy i mean everything from um uh like infinite ammo weapons down to like oh here's some concept art of this particular character or like a high high, high res model uh that you can look at of this character so you it's can cool go that back you can buy a knife what I said that's cool that you can buy a knife, an infinite ammo weapon. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, except if you throw the knife and then it's zero, it's only one ammo. Ah, damn. Yeah, infinite ammo <laughs> versions of your uh, of your, of your weapons. Yeah. Uh, so there is a little bit of that. Like it gives you a big list of the things. That's something the series has done for a while. Um, I, I think as far back as RE6, uh, they they had that mode uh, as uh, as well, or that, that that kind of thing. There's also the mercenaries mode, uh, which is a long standing. Uh, kind of mini game mode which is like uh challenge challenge combat courses that you can do with uh limited ammo and resources they're timed and scored uh and you can uh use th uh, the points that you get from that to buy better weapons unlock levels to go do better stuff um i messed around with that a little bit it's never been entirely my cup of tea because i'm not necessarily great at the combat uh, an mm -hmm. an iteration of these games, uh, but it's good that it's there, uh, especially after um, an explicit mercenaries mode was missing in Resident Evil Seven. Cool. One yeah. thing I forgot to ask about: Did you talk about the gun upgrading system? Do they have any sim anything similar to like RE Four here? Oh, very similar to RE Four. Yeah, okay. uh, not Sweet. as ma not as many versions of individual guns. I think. I mean. Over the course of my playthrough, there were probably three or four of any of like uh, the the class of weapons that you have. Um, okay. So like three pistols, three shotguns, etc. Uh, but uh, what's nice is like at the base level, like yeah, some of them are upgrades from the others. But the bigger consideration is that like, oh, this is uh, like a riot shotgun, so it will fire in a wide spray. But in exchange for that you get a, a faster rate of fire and it holds more holds more shells and stuff like that and then you can upgrade around that uh as you see fit it's very similar particularly good for targeting medics <laughs> jeez um but it <laughs> dark um <laughs> but yeah uh it is it is quite similar uh to to RE8 i'm not sure or sorry to RE4 I'm not sure if um, it has any of like the like hidden secret stuff where like at full upgrade uh, it unlocks like a different style of firing than you would have before. Beast mode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I think that that is stuff that would come like on New Game Plus or anything. I'm sure stuff will get wild um, 
uh, as you go through and invest more and keep your upgrades and stuff. Do they still have a pistol with uh, laughably large ammo capacity? Because that was my favorite thing from <laughs> RE4 uh, and 5. Yeah, uh, the highest ammo capacity that I got, uh, because there are also like weapon upgrades that you can buy and find in the world. Um, it was like a, uh, it was the um, uh, M1911 uh you know okay, stand, sure. yeah so stand, 1911 bullets <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing nothing wild like re4 where you could get a pistol that held like 30 i think that with the yeah. extended magazine and the like as much as i upgraded it had like 17 in a clip which is yeah, reasonable funny, for a gun of that size is actually in real life a fairly low capacity gun yeah i mean it's it's a 45 most of the time yeah which bugged me because it's a uh, you know all all of the ammo that you find is nine millimeter so like oh, i'm like that's fine where in the world are people getting a nine millimeter 1911 <laughs> like um but uh uh yeah so like seven seventeen uh was like what i had on there uh and like the you had like sniper rifles but some of them are coded as uh like uh assault rifles like semi-auto uh so mm -hmm. it doesn't it's not that bad that those have um big clips on them as well sure yeah yeah any other questions? Going once, going twice. Sold. Okay. Um, David, how about you? Sure. So um, a couple of things. Um, so as I kind of hinted in the uh, pre-roll, I uh, spent this weekend uh, LARPing, which is, I guess, kind of uh, gaming adjacent. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a... Uh, group uh based out of um uh mississippi called uh solar it's it's like southern live action role playing something mm -hmm. but you know uh but yeah so basically uh just you know once a month they uh have a weekend long event where people go and um you know <laughs> camp out and you know, on Saturday, they generally will have a, um, what they call a field battle. So, which will be like a two to three hour long, like extended, you know, you know, live action, uh, you know, role playing, uh, combat thing. And then between that, we'll have like, you know, wandering monsters and, you know, people interacting character, that sort of thing. Mm hmm. Uh, some of the interesting uh, things with it is, um, you know, everyone's in costume and uh, generally fairly, um, you know, extensive uh, costumes. Uh, you know, depending on what uh, species people are playing, it can be anything from like, you know, playing an orc with like green skin and tusks to uh, various... Um, Oh, uh, various, uh, you know, elves with pointy ears, stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, people in everything from, uh, so like pirate style, you know, kind of, uh, naval jackets to like full, uh, chain mail, things like that. Yeah. So that's really cool. Uh, the other thing is, um, the location is actually a, uh, one, like 100 acres of uh woodland hmm. that was bought specifically for this oh so they and can't yeah i want so, to go for the winnie the pooh cosplay weekend yes exactly exactly <laughs> um and so for example like the the group i uh kind of went with um oh uh, basically embodies the uh druid faction Okay. So their camp is kind of off in the woods away from everyone else and like they're actually in the process of like building a, a log cabin on the site and stuff like that. Hmm. Uh you know, similarly the uh you know, I don't know what would be normally like a clubhouse, you know, where they have snacks and stuff is all done up uh, you know, like medieval tavern style. Oh nice. Uh it's, yeah, so that's that's a lot of fun. The other thing is, um, you know, it's all uh, very, you know, very everything in character. So, um, 
you know, before the main battle um, on Saturday, you know, Friday night was a lot of, you know, the various kind of dignitaries of the factions going and, you know, negotiating who's going to devote what resources and, you know, what their strategy is going to be, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, dealing with tensions between, like, for example, you know, we were with the Druid faction, and there's also an undead faction that, you know, we're both, uh, you know, fighting for the same thing, but don't necessarily like each other. Right, right. Hmm. So, uh, so that was uh, a lot of fun. The other thing that's fun is, uh, you, uh, part of it is you have to either, um, volunteer for a couple hours, you know, working in the, uh, you know, the kitchen or, um, playing um some of the just random monsters okay uh, for people to fight and so that's fun because it's the people playing the monsters have a lot of freedom you know they it can be anything from just like you know i'm just gonna be like i don't know you know if you're a goblin it can be anything from just like yeah i'm just gonna go and like attack people and fight and you know that sort of thing or it can be like, I'm going to go and be the co goblin that like, I didn't even want to do this. I wanted to go to art school, but mom insisted <laughs> I, you know, become a, you know, become a minion. Oh. So, well, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, it's, it's very much, uh, you know, you never quite know what you're going to uh, get. Yeah. Uh, for and like for example, this weekend, um, there's a overarching story that's kind of continuously going on, and the kind of the thrust of this weekend was, uh, there had been um, there's a Nippon, which is uh, you know, the game world's kind of equivalent of Japan, had um a faction of that had kind of gone against the emperor and um basically converted everyone in their i don't know domain to um zombies okay to undead and so was now invading so uh you know for the actual field battle it was fighting um a lot of ninjas and then like a lot of like zombionis and things like that Okay. But then for the uh uh for the just like random, you know, monsters wandering around between things, a lot of it was creatures that were de um oh displaced displaced from uh you know, refugees from the fighting in the pond. Okay. So like a whole bunch of like Tanookis running around uh causing mischief and things like that. Hmm. So yeah, uh, so kind of the, the end result of it is it was just, you know, a really good time. I was really impressed. Um, you know, sometimes with these sorts of things, you can get people just kind of being asshat, you know, competitive, that sort of thing. Yeah, that would be my but worry. I was super impressed, you know, like everyone that was involved... It was, um, you know, like, if you're playing as a monster, it was very obvious, like, I'm not out here to, like, win or to beat people. Like, my, you know, everyone who was playing a monster, their first concern was, like, being entertaining for the people that they're interacting with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it'll be it'll be more fun with every for everybody if I do the if I think of this as collaborative storytelling and not competitive. Yeah, right, I mean, exactly. Effectively, that that mo that monster is GMing the encounter as well. Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, similarly, um, you know, it to it to me, it seemed like there was a really good um, kind of balance in terms of there being kind of some, uh, you know, I don't know, kind of Game of Thrones esque, you know, political in intrigue. Uh oh with again with with everyone keeping in mind that it's you know just to have fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so you know, think things like uh we we brought a ton of new people. 
and uh, the the faction that's kind of the undead faction. That's the people we came with. Uh, oh, rivals like definitely really wanted to recruit some people just to kind of <laughs> grab the other team. Oh yeah. <laughs> So, you know, and, and it was very much, you know, it was people legitimately being helpful uh, and, you know, also kind of playing at the, you know, sort of, uh, uh, you know, frenemies type thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, it calls to mind uh, Venture Brothers, right? Not mm -hmm. not to be a one-note guy because, you know, we, I talk about Venture Brothers a lot. Uh, <laughs> but like, oh, yeah, you know, you've just, uh, it ev everything works more smoothly when you have that fun rivalry when you have the guild of calamitous intent and the osi right right exactly yeah uh the other thing that i wouldn't have thought of but was really cool was seeing there's a lot of great role playing uh you know people did a great job of you know just when they're sitting around like what's their um you know what's their motives you know how do their characters interact you know that sort of thing uh, mm -hmm. Which was great, but what I didn't expect was there is a surprising amount of role playing with the kind of main large scale battle. Okay. So um, to give you an idea, there there was probably at least fifty people participating in this, and it was a lot of fun seeing people, um, kind of what roles they they naturally fell into and kind of how they saw themselves mm -hmm. uh yo know, uh you know their kind of role on the battlefield i'm and, here to be a know. red shirt it's okay it's my thing <laughs> yeah well yeah. and and it was like super um it was actually though a thing where it was like um so i i had a long spear is what i equipped myself with and so and i basically could take between one and two hits which, considering these are foam weapons, that's literally like someone tapping you with a weapon. Like, right, right. super easy to kill you. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of it would be like, uh, you know, p uh, people who were more warriors, uh, you know, lining up with shields and, you know, blocking the enemies so that I'd either be like poking them over their shoulder or I played a rogue. So like, you know, when they got distracted, just kind of... Uh, you know, flank around behind them and poke them in the back. What was the and, um like the, the the overarching goal? Like, what was each like army or faction attempt attempting to accomplish? Uh, so in these? it was actually kind of fun. Uh, they basically our group. Um, we split into a couple of teams. My team. Uh, they needed to. Uh, their goal was to. Uh untangle the ley line uh so that uh the like high high archmage or whatever could you know send you know magical power from i don't know the nexus or something which basically what that meant is um you know once we accomplish that they announced like hey everyone in the game whatever spells per day you've used up like you now have back hmm. oh nice um but the way that worked is we get to like the the quote circle of power and they had literally taken a bunch of bar balls of yarn and tangled them together <laughs> and so like several of our casters had to untangle and, and wind up all the balls of yarn while everyone else protected them oh that's cool <laughs> yeah yeah uh similarly uh so the way that like spells and uh, and like uh, alchemist fire and stuff like that works is uh, we're called spell packets, basically little cloth packets filled with bird seed. Okay. And so uh, one of the groups, um, you know, halfway through, um, they're like, "All right, we found some ships." Uh, you know, the GM says, "You know, we found some ships in the um, dock." So what we're going to do is, you know, we're, you know, some of you are going to dash over there and you're going to make these packets as quickly as possible. And that's representing, you know, stuffing the wadding and filling up the gunpowder and stuff like that. And then another group's going to be, you know, chucking them into the enemy line to kind of thin them out. Yeah. 
So like, yeah, the the whole thing was just silly. Uh for me it was kind of funny because um the my my group um halfway through like all of basically almost all of our fighters uh got kind of redirected to another battlefield and so it was just like a bunch of squishy people trying to hold the line <laughs> uh, but luckily one of the people that was there was the head of basically the healing faction okay and so it was just like he he literally could just resurrect like i don't know 25 times per day oh wow. so it was just like us getting slaughtered and him resurrecting us <laughs> which you know, was just kind of funny so I, I'm curious, with all your weapons training, did that factor in at all, or do they kind of iron anything that relates to your actual skill with the weapon out? So that was one of my main concerns, uh, because in particular, you're not allowed hitting to the head or hands, and um, you basically are just allowed tapping someone. So mm -hmm. it's not particularly realistic. Um, that's one of the reasons I went with a spear, is because... You know, with a spear, you're generally aiming set um, center of mass anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a light poke. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They don't have like a mace or anything like that that required a whole bunch of finesse to try and tap somebody with it. <laughs> um, a, a couple of people. Um, you know, it's still... You know, it's still, you know, you can have like, a, I don't know, like a eight foot long, you know, longsword or whatever but it's still kind of foam and pvc so it's still pretty light mm -hmm. uh i think my favorite thing actually is uh the fighter class can get super strength which at the low levels that's just like hey if someone gets downed on the battlefield you can drag them at full speed like back to your healers but uh at higher levels it's literally like i would be fighting and uh oh uh, you know get downed and they would literally like throw me like 40 <laughs> feet back to the healers <laughs> and so it's just like you know in effect i'm invulnerable while walking back to get healed <laughs> so th that's cool i didn't realize that they had like a D, &D mechanic underpinning all this oh yeah yeah so there's uh yeah different classes and different stats uh you know it's it's a lot of like um there's a specific, uh, you know, phrase you have to say for each of the spells. So, you know, I don't know, by the plane of fire, I call down, uh, you know, flames upon you or something. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's su super, super dorky, but a lot of fun. It, as, does anyone like track this stuff or is it very like kind of easygoing where it's like, yeah, he can cast fire. I'll just jump down right now or something. Yeah. Like, so, I mean. It's mostly on the honor system. I mean, you do have, uh, you basically get your, at the beginning of the weekend, you get your spells per day that are kind of cards. And so, like, when there's a law in the combat, you just, like, tear in half uh, the cards for the spells you've cast. So it's one of those things where, like, yeah, if you wanted to, it probably wouldn't be hard to cheat. But at the same time, there is, you know, mechanics and some record keeping that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. And, and also, do you want to be a person who cheats at LARP? Like, what are you getting out right. of that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even saying that to like, you know, um, cast aspersions on LARP. This actually sounds really fun, uh, but more just kind of like it's kind of like cheating at pickup basketball. Like, what in the right, world are exactly. you gaining? Like, just this sucks. This is yeah, bad. You've traveled three hours out into the woods with this group of people that is yeah. very like, I'm sure everyone knows everyone is all very well connected. So I, I'm sure you want to ruin all the goodwill yeah. for that weekend. Right. Exactly. I, I'm sure and, there are people who try to do it, but like, I don't know. It doesn't seem like the kind of behavior that has like an intrinsic reward to it. I think that it'd be more rewarding to continue, uh, you know, <laughs> like continue the, the, the shared fiction and like, help keep the community together, you know, yeah, by exactly by, by making sure like everybody a, has a good time. Right. It seems like a similarity to D and D where it's like, you have to be kind of careful about who you're playing with. Cause it's like, I agree. Most people should be like that and be like fun to play with and stuff. 
But then it's like if you get a bad person or something. Like yeah. I played D and D at a convention one time, and it's like it only takes a couple of bad people to really like ruin the experience for everyone. Mm. So yeah, but yeah, I'm, yeah. It's not I, like that wasn't the case here, so that's good. Yeah, I I was super impressed, and I would say even more than that, like. I was really impressed. You know, there there is like the faction that like you can be like, you know, some like accursed evil fae who's like, you know, like healing spells damage you and damage spells heal you and you're mm -hmm. you know you're a bit super edge lordy. But like everyone I saw it, like played that, but kind of as camp, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. It was like, yeah, we're gonna play this and be like super edge lords, but because it's fun, not because like I don't know, we're taking it too seriously. Yeah, I'm not actually doing this to ruin anybody's day. This is just the role that I feel like playing, and there's a space right, for that. Exactly. Yeah. So so yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Oh, the the my other favorite thing is uh one of one of the like things that's written in the lore is like Oh yeah, you know these weekends they're like I forget what they call them. They're like, they're like the gathering that happens, uh, you know, every month. And for some strange, crazy magic, like uh, you know, all that the halflings and like fairies and stuff like that, uh, you know, for some reason, like grow up to be like normal people size. <laughs> so like uh one of the players was literally a six foot five halfling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. Yeah. Oh, that had to be fun, yeah. Oh my god, and the number of times a day they eat, that's uh that is a lot of uh <laughs> a lot of halfling to keep fed there. Yep. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Th th this sounds very fun and very wholesome. I am also picturing just uh, cresting the hill just a whole bunch of good old boys and like jeeps and dune buggies <laughs> just coming so down it's on also this. funny because like there are some dynamic of that okay and to me in some ways that made it kind of more fun okay uh because you know it's i i know like yeah it, you know it definitely you know takes place in um and uh oh uh, you know mississippi yeah but so you know is kind of that sort of culture some but again just like the other things it seemed like people who you know had a good on you know good sense of perspective on that thing yeah yeah no i was just picturing them like like just cresting the hill and just like sweeping the entire field like woo yeah <laughs> like just, just just chasing you guys off i like just general miscreants oh, okay yeah, yeah i get what it's like yeah <laughs> yeah that's actually probably <laughs> I, just, I don't want that to happen let me let me make it very clear that would be a suboptimal turn of events for everybody involved also just it was a funny image that popped into my head <laughs> oh no yeah no i totally agree um yeah oh man um, yeah sounds badass do you think you're gonna do it again uh i'm definitely hoping to yeah definitely planning on it is it once a year or... uh once a month Oh damn! <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like so, um, just enough. Yeah, I that don't you... know if I'll do it quite that often, but uh, yeah, it's you definitely can. Yeah, that th that's just enough. Where by the time you go and do the one session, you've got to start preparing for the next one. Yeah, exactly. And and like I said, like especially the people who like live closer there, like you know, there's one guy who's literally you know constructing like a. Uh, primitive house at the site so like huh. it's you know one of those things where you can uh, you can do as much or as little with it as you want kind of yeah i just imagine they you know they talk about working on the cabin uh at their normal uh all the time to people who just you know left out the context and one time they're like <laughs> oh yeah a whole bunch of fairies got in and messed everything up switched around all the spices so i gotta reorganize that <laughs> yeah. wait what <laughs> did you say so? yeah. yeah i know what i said <laughs> oh geez <laughs> Huh. Well, that's cool. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have any video games or has that been have, have that can, uh, have that yeah. consumed you? Yeah, I'm pr I'm probably gonna go quick because you know, kind of been talking for a bit, but um they added second extinction to uh Game Pass on PC. So okay. 
I don't know if any of you've seen this. It's basically a three-player uh, kind of Left 4 Dead-like, although a little bit more open world. And kind of the plot line is that for some reason, uh, dinosaurs uh, suddenly return to Earth, uh, apparently by burrowing out of the ground. That's right. Hide about a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah, you know, I don't know. I guess that's where no, we don't find you know fossils. Where fossils? Maybe yeah. The asteroid never got them. They just, they just burrowed. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and now, like, some of them have crazy elemental powers because, I don't know, none of this is meant to make sense. But, uh, so, humanity now, uh, like, lives on a space station, and you're part of a group that, like, drop ships in to, uh, you know, fight dinosaurs to retake the Earth. Um, it's, it's early access. Uh, it's kind of my, my takeout right now. It's a very solid, very playable game. Um, it's very silly and kind of dumb actiony. Okay. But I first, I think, you know, I think it's going to be a fun game. Like I, I think it's going to be a good balance of, you know, being kind of a left for dead with a little bit more of like a, um, Warhammer or, or not Warhammer, um, Warframe or, you know, destiny or something like that kind of, um, you know, games as a service, open world type thing. Yep. Um, you know, you can play as various classes, which each have, uh, you know, different abilities. Uh, that you can uh, do um, a lot of the larger enemies, which right now are ankylosaurs, which are like those armored ones with club tails, T Rexes, and stegosaurus or not stegosaurus, triceratops. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of those really emphasize they'll be like armored in most of their body, and then have a weak point, and so you either need to like maneuver to exploit that or like hit them with an explosive to flip them over, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. I'm emphasizing it's teamwork. Like... on another level. Exactly. <laughs> um, probably, uh, my favorite thing is, um, the characterization is just a lot of fun. Um, oh, uh, probably my favorite character is a, um, Oh, African lady who her special ability is like a healing ability, which is explained and presented in game as her just like encouraging the other players. Well, kind of like a bard. Yeah. Yeah. But it's straight up like you press the button and she's like, look at us. Who would have thought? Not yeah. me. Like, like <laughs> just like, oh, you, you guys know I love you all. You know that, right? Like, it's just super wholesome in a very silly way. The healing powers red. of good vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's like that. There's, uh, you know, sniper dude, stuff like that. So, like, just I'm I'm hoping it seems like they're going for a very good balance of just stupid dumb action but without necessarily being a dumb game. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um yeah, I recommend it. I'm not sure there's a lot more to say about that, but yeah, good stuff. I feel like I got a, I got a feel of it, especially looking at the uh at the at the screenshots. Yeah, second mm-hmm. extinction. Yeah, but who's getting extinct? Ooh. Humans or the dinosaurs? Yeah. <laughs> dum dum dum. Uh, let's see here, Ben. What about you? I don't got much, but I got one. Uh, I played another multiplayer game this week. I played a game called Unrailed, which I don't know if we've talked about on the show or not. I don't but... recognize it. All right, so I it's I've a purple seen it link. Played... Huh? It's a purple link, so it means that I have at least looked at it once. It may have come up, but I think you may have. Uh, it may have been like a like in a list of like oh I've, I've like given this a couple of you know I gave this a few minutes, but don't have a lot to say about it. Yeah. 
So, so this is a multiplayer game. You play it with friends, or you can play it by yourself if you want. Uh, one of the coolest things about it is the menu is just on the, <laughs> the ground that you're, like, walking on. Hmm. And so you can just, like, walk over the settings and set everything. And it's just, like, very clever. And then, like, the tutorial is great. It's like you learn how to do everything in, like, two minutes <laughs> or less. Um, but the, the game itself is a multiplayer game. There's a couple different modes for how you can play, but the basic premise is... There is a train at a starting point. It is going to another station. There is not a track uh, to get it there. And so you need to go through and build a track to get the train from point A to point B. And the way that you do that is you have this procedurally generated map that has trees, rocks, and water, and mountains. So there's four hazard types. Mountains you cannot get around in any way, at least at the beginning of the game. Uh, so you have to chop trees, dig through the mountain, and build bridges <laughs> over the water in order to get the train across. And then build tracks for the train to get across. On top of this, the train itself has like a water tank that heats up that you need to cool down. Or I guess it's just the engine that you need to cool down with water. Mm -hmm. um, and so the idea is it's kind of like an overcooked situation where you have like three or four different people. They're all kind of doing their own thing, but you need to like talk with one another and kind of coordinate what you have to do uh, to make everything kind of stay, stay together. Um, on top of that, there's, like, a really cool uh, kind of upgrade system within it. So, like, that's, like, your basic run is getting from point A to point B. Um, but as you're doing this through the level, there's, like, collectibles that might be off the beaten path that you have to maybe try and build some bridges to um, to get, uh, I think it's, like, a bolt, like a like a bolt that goes in a railroad track or something like that. But that's like the economy for upgrades. Mm -hmm. If you collect like three or four of them, you can upgrade any of your cars or you can buy new cars to add on. Um, and so there's like three tiers of upgrades. One is up, just upgrade a car that you already have. That costs a certain amount. The second one is you can buy a new car, but your train is like limited by size based on the engine. So you can only have like three cars at the beginning of the game. But if you upgrade your engine once, you can have four, then five and so on. Um, and then the third thing you can buy is you can buy a new engine, which is pricey, but it will you can add more car, cars, and then it'll take you to a new biome, which basically mm. ups the difficulty of the game. Gotcha. Um, so, like, there's different biomes. Like, there's, like, snow, where you have to, like, walk across it to clear the snow before you can build a track. There's, like, a hell lava-type biome, eventually, that makes it very tough, because you can't build bridges in lava. Mm. Uh Sad. Yes, you yeah. don't do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in general, the game's like really fun. It's a lot of fun to like coordinate with people. It plays up to four players. So I I played it once uh like last week with just two two people, but playing it with four was a lot more fun. Um people can basically have more designated roles at that point where it's like, okay, I'm picking up this axe, I'm gonna clear every mountain mound in the way between here and there. Um, and then, you know, someone else will do the same thing with trees and then some other people might be dedicated to building tracks and like collecting resources, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I don't know how much more to say about it cause it's a pretty simple game and I've pretty much described everything you can do with it. <laughs> but, uh, Sorry, what was this called again? It's called unrailed. Um, it was part of like a bundle last week that also had widget in it, which was one yeah. of the games that I played last week. But um, uh, you, you failed to pronounce that correctly. Which uh, there, or... there is a bang at the end, and I expect you to emphasize it. Both which it and Unrailed have do have uh, exclamation point on it. Very enthusiastic um, games. However, the makers of these games are not as good as the auteur Darren Aronofsky. So I will pronounce mother mother, but I will not pronounce these games <laughs> in the same way. The tricky part with mother is you also have to make it clear that the M at the front is lowercase. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. That's, yeah, that's the tough part. That's the pro <laughs> move. Yeah, so you have to make it clear you're not calling to a specific mother. Yeah. You're, you're, you're calling just to in, mother nature. You're, you're invoking the symbolic concept of mother. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Anyways, is, this game, this game is fun. We should play it sometime. <laughs> is there anything uh, kind of stopping you, you know, from making like a really inefficient? Like, is, does it penalize you if your kind of track no. is like zigzagging all over the place? Like, is it grading you on like economizing materials, or is it just whatever keeps this thing rolling? No, in fact, like sometimes you need to do that if you need to buy time because the train is moving at a constant speed and you cannot stop it. <laughs> Does so, it speed up over the course of a run? 
Mm, it only speeds up if you build a track to the next train station, then it like fast forwards for you oh, okay. and just like yeah. goes there pretty instantly. But sometimes mm-hmm. that sucks because you might want to collect a bunch of resources. There's mm. like a hack where if you collect a bunch of resources and move it to the station that you end at at the start of the at the start of the next run or whatever, you'll have all those resources. So like okay. there's like this max mining where it's like, all right, everyone like collect all the resources you can get and put it here at the end. Um there's also an achievement system where there will be like a a, a goal or like a, a task to do every round where it's like every person cut down one tree or something like that or like let your train be on fire for ten seconds. Uh, so it's like so if you complete that, union. yeah. <laughs> so if you complete that, you get like complete the insurance fraud. <laughs> yeah. So if you complete that, you get like an extra spike that you can use to like buy all these resources and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's about it. But it's it's enjoyable to play. It's like D anD D. If you get a good group of friends, it can be a lot of fun. So nice. Yeah, it's a good idea for a game. Mm-hmm. So I'm big... sorry. Did you say is the is the currency railroad spikes? I believe so. It's like that, or like screws, or something. It it looks yeah, some piece of something that you could find at Lowe's probably. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Is that all you had, Ben? That is all I had. Cool. Uh, Dennis, round us out. Yeah, some uh, some fun stuff came onto my docket this week. Um, with the advent of Mother's Day, I uh, hope you all called your mothers, uh, one of Jen's gifts was new Pokemon Snap. Oh, dang. So cool. I've joined you in that pantheon, and uh, we, we played some of that. Uh, on Mother's Day, it's cute. That is a really relaxing, fun little game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the one insight I have to add to it is um, just how much extra you can spot when you are not the one at the controls. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> you, you and, end up getting and, tunnel vision. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we kind of knew this from playing Minecraft Dungeons, and like Luke and Milo, if they're watching us play, are always the first ones to spot treasure chests or you know little side areas that sort of thing um but yeah with with jen going through the area and just just trying to get the butter free or you know whatever mm-hmm. uh, we're like that's over there that's over there this is over there there's there's a lot of shouting uh underlying this relaxing little game so <laughs> it's uh it's been a blast we haven't played too much um we haven't uh gotten out of the first area yet we've just come through it a couple times um but that's kind of how the game is designed yeah. and I'm, I'm sure i'll have more to say about that later it's made for uh it's it's made for short runs. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean they, they haven't even uh introduced the whatever the fruits are that you can throw at the animals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which they make a, a a very uh strong point to say these are much lighter than apples, but just as tasty. So <laughs> when you just are beaning Pokemon left and right with these apples, it's not like Huck and Granny Smith's at a Caterpie. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, in the previous game, they straight up gave you like pesticide balls to throw at them. <laughs> yep, <laughs> we've evolved a lot in what? What has it been? Twenty years? Fourteen years? Yeah, twenty years, give or take. Good Gotta Lord. round up them all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I jumped a little further in Subnautica, uh, another game that I'm playing with the boys. Um, and without spoiling anything, although Ben, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, our rescue ship arrived, uh, yeah. and that was an interesting moment to have the kids witness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yay. Oh, no. Mm. Well, we'll unpack that in therapy later. Uh, let's go after some more fishies, kids. <laughs> <Fun for blood. laughs> it's um, But it's effective, right? Like, it's a, it's, a, it's a big narrative moment in, like, a very small amount of time and, like, mm-hmm. without, without having to do much. Okay. And with a well, very have, large amount of body count. Yeah. you. Uh, I, I kind of, from a meta standpoint, just suspected, like, that it can't be this easy. Or, like, this this is going to introduce some complication, not some solution. Mm-hmm. Um, which uh, which certainly it delivered on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So continuing to play away. I've, I've started finding pieces for the Cyclops, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, the first like, sub-sub. Uh, so uh, progressing on that uh, equipment tree. So yeah. I'm a big proponent. The game starts when you get the Cyclops. <laughs> yeah, well, that's 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 what I understand. So I'm still splashing around in the shallows. Are you are um, you building a base yet? I am not. I I think I've built the habitat builder, or maybe I haven't. 
I need to I need to make a bunch more wiring kits, but I've I've talked about before just how bad the um like recipe pinning system for lack of a better term is in the game. So it, I think I've either built the habitat builder but not messed around with it just because I was, you know, getting propelled towards other stuff. Uh, or that was one of the things that I like had the materials but used a wiring kit on something else and now I need another wiring kit. I like I wanna watch you play this game <laughs> <laughs> but i'm also going to be sick and at a virtual match party this weekend so i am, <laughs> cannot yeah. do that <laughs> well I, i'm sure i'm sure there will be other opportunities um and then the final thing that i jumped into uh in vr no less uh was astrobot rescue mission oh dang so yeah that was so they, uh they gave that away with the play right yeah the play they, inside they or whatever gave away a lot of vr stuff moss um, and uh, res, Thumper, res infinite yeah. which is Oh, say again. They have a Moss Thumper Res Infinite. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I I put a little bit of time into Res Infinite, and that game is just inscrutable. Like not fun. Don't understand what's going on. Uh, it might show up later in the episode for our for our multiplayer question. But uh, I digress. Astrobot Rescue Mission is absolutely adorable. Mm-hmm. Um, and will make you very very aware of how little you can actually turn around in your chair. <laughs> um like I, I literally instead of sitting on my big you know sink into it couch um i got i got a, a stool from from the dining area and sat in that just for the express purpose of being able to easily stand up and like physically turn myself around to see areas of the level and just like pivot yeah mm-hmm. and I, I would have told you like oh yeah i can just look over my shoulder like how big a deal is that uh, and it's like no that's that's really uncomfortable to do in, <laughs> in a traditional match, like and especially um repeated times mm-hmm. uh, or for, for for an extended period of time yeah <clears throat> this so, is this is like you're it's you're controlling it like a regular 3d platformer but you're looking at it like the levels of diorama is mm-hmm, that correct mm-hmm. yeah yeah and so you they they do a uh mario 64 style style uh character as the camera so you're like a big mommy bot i guess uh that kind of wanders behind the child running through the level as uh, as they round up all their siblings Mm -hmm. um and so it's got that kind of justification but you really just kind of meander uh along behind the uh the avatar that you're controlling um, it is kind of a, annoying. Another parallel with early Mario games is once you've moved forwards, you will not back up, even if mm. you run your character further back in the level. Um, and so for some levels where you kind of go back through and want to make sure you find all the secrets, that gets really frustrating because you kind of want to be looking at things from behind, um, but you got to go past them first. And then, you know, if you realize there was something you missed, you just you're either restarting the level or trying to. Uh, play that section from a really weird angle um, no. which it might be designed for and it might totally not uh, <laughs> which can can be uh, annoying um, but overall like the the personality of the game and, and the fun factor of it is is really great they I, I finished the first world and something that I really appreciate is that in in these kind of platforming games usually you've got like a series of levels around a theme like oh these are all the ice levels or the desert levels um, it feels like each level I've hit so far is a biome unto itself. Like they really, really went um, very diverse in in the kind of thing. So one's a mushroom cave and one's a high rise girders under construction. And, um, you know, it varies that much. I'll be interested to see if we, as we keep on going through worlds, if it stays like every level is completely its own thing. Because mm-hmm. um, it's really neat to see all the assets that they've made for it and just how, you know, it all hangs together stylistically because you got these cute little robots running around it. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's just a lot of creativity, uh, especially as you get to, you know, each each level has some kind of set piece or, you know, big character towards the end. Not necessarily a boss, but just, um, you know, a, a giant cactus at the end of the canyon level that pops up to hand you your, your ending platform and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, just really fun and creative. Nice. Um, I, I would also be lying if I didn't say I lost an extra uh, 15 to 20 minutes after I was done playing, going to your little home base and buying a bunch of trinkets of uh, and just looking at those in VR. So you get a little, <laughs> you, you talked about the levels being a diorama. You get a little uh, mini diorama or mini uh, model statue mm-hmm. um, of just something inspired from that level oh, nice. uh, from a little vending machine. And you just, yeah, just, just, you know, twist it around, rotate it, look at it move it in 3d and there's just that that unto itself is very uh intriguing hmm 
Yeah, I've heard so, yeah. nothing but good things about it, and you have added on to that. I need to get my, uh, I, 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 I mailed out for the the adapter that will make the PSVR work with yeah. the PS5. I need to do that preemptively. Did you need to prove that you had a PS5? Uh, no, I didn't actually. All I needed to do was enter the um, uh, serial number from the uh, like box, like the little converter box that you have. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it arrived much sooner than I expected to. It only took like two weeks or so. Uh, but I, also yeah. getting by on my TV is kind of a pain in the ass. And I just haven't done it. <laughs> so no, That's understandable. Yeah. Um, I've heard that. Were you playing on a pro before for PS4 VR? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've heard that the, just the horsepower of the PS five is a noticeable jump in quality. Cool. Um, and I, I know it will be for me cause I've got a PS four basic. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't know how big the jump is for a pro, but yeah. uh, I've, I've heard people just raving about that as well. So you think, you know, PS VR, but wait till you try it on PS five. Yeah. I feel weird. Like five years ago, I was like, yeah, VR. Now I have two VR headsets. It's nuts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'll never work. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you a question and then you answer it. Um, Dennis, what is the question we ask the nice people? Yeah. And this question was inspired by Aaron. So thank you so much for, for hitting us up on Facebook. Um, you know, sometimes the whole is not greater than the sum of its parts. Sometimes there is a part that is greater than the whole. Um, so what is a game where you like the aesthetics or music or other kind of ancillary element way better than the game itself? Yeah. And I will get us started here with Greg, who says there's a lot of games I can answer this question for, for the Dark Souls games. Uh, those come to mind for sure. Uh, but I'll reach into the more obscure and select Predator for the NES. Uh, this is one of the few games that a small company called Pack-In Video developed, uh, and it was published by Acclaim. Uh, there's a lot of the game to like. The story is pretty faithful to the movie. The controls handle well, and the music of the game is awesome. Seriously, it's one of my favorite NES soundtracks. Sad to say, the gameplay sucks. It's too hard, tedious to play, and boring to go through. With a better company, uh, it could have been a very good game. Probably another case of rush, a rush development cycle to tie into a movie where the developer did the best they could in the time constraints. Yeah, we did this for an episode of Abject Suffering. It's not good, which Mm-mm. sucks because a Predator game should be amazing. But they, this... they came out with a new one recently, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, from the uh, Friday the 13th people. Apparently it wasn't very good. Wow, uh, the streak continues. Yeah. How do you well, mess that up? I was going to say, people said that about the Friday the 13th game, but I no. absolutely love that. Yeah. I heard more good things. Uh, the, the The people that I heard saying thing bad, bad things about the Predator game had good things to say about the Friday the Thirteenth game. Yeah, I guess to be fair, I just didn't hear anybody talk about Predator game except for yeah, a few people yeah, saying it's bad. So it's probably real bad in that case. Since it just kind like... of it just kind of <laughs> landed with a thud. It didn't really make that much of an impact. Uh, that team's going to get a second chance though because they're working on an Evil Dead game that's kind of a similar um, uh, asymmetrical multiplayer kind of deal. Oh, sweet. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things. It's just very hard to get right. Yeah. Um, let's see here. David, what does Callum say? Callum says Extinction from 2018. I like the idea of a of being a small, agile dude taking on massive things attack on Titan style. Them being giant orcs also appealed. P- pity it was awful to play. Good thing it was only $5 on sale. I have no idea what this game is. Extinction is literally an Attack on Titan ripoff. Oh. It it was a asymmetrical multiplayer as well, right? I'm not sure about that. Uh, But, like, its plot line and, like, overall thing was definitely a ripoff, except, you know, orcs and stuff. Okay. Um, My understanding, I don't think... I'm not I'm not meaning that to say, like, it was shovelware or anything. Yeah. But, yeah. I th- I think you're thinking of because so I got this confused with evolve evolve yeah yeah there it is okay yep no okay huh oh and I I just did a search and my search pulled up a bunch of stuff for a second extinction so <laughs> hey there you go Synergy. play that yeah 
Um, let's see here. Ben, what does Alexander say? Alexander says, boy, do I love the character designs and implied personalities of the heroes in Overwatch. Boy, do I hate playing in a storyless time vampire like Overwatch. It's, <laughs> it's one of those things like that. That is a, that, that is a game where like, oh yeah, I can take or leave the play, but like, I'm probably going to get the most enjoyment out of doing a TV tropes or a wiki dive on this where I can appreciate the work that was put into the characters and just read short little stories about them and then go about my day. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's probably Overwatch not. really just needs to be either like a TV show or something yeah. comic. Yep. Look, it, if you don't get hardcore into the lore, you really can't understand the meaning behind justice reigns from above. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not it is high noon. <laughs> he says that at any time of day. It's really confusing. Uh, hey, how do you guys like my six-year-old Overwatch jokes? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'd say it's outdated, but the game's still being played. So. True, true enough. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, Dennis, what does Gwen say? Gwen says Sunset Overdrive. I haven't thought about that name in forever. Yeah. Uh, Sunset Overdrive has the worst script imaginable, but the soundtrack rips. Yeah, has a cool also aesthetic too. Really fun, um, like overall aesthetic and character uh, models and stuff. Yeah, Just that a... was their thing at the time because they they were coming out right around when Ubisoft was like, "Girls are too hard to animate." No, uh, and so Sunset was like, uh, "We'll just we'll have everything in the game." Yeah, let's do it. Do that. Yeah. Um, Jack says, uh, and I'll jump on this grenade. So if anybody. Uh, is a guppy fan uh, and just don't attribute this to jack <laughs> i'll, I'll read you know, p- p- picture picture me saying this jack says uh the binding of isaac truly is an aesthetic marvel clearly the best thing about the game is the perfect art style and visuals while the gameplay tends to be shallow and basic five stars <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's one i wouldn't consider but that is definitely a, a game i want to play but can't get over the Scatological humor. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's pretty juvenile. Yeah. Um, let's see. David, what does David say? I didn't do that on purpose. I swear you planned that every Liar. week. Liar. <laughs> yeah. We just have a lot of Davids who comment. Like, they're pretty good odds that one of the odds 25%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so David said, I recently played a 2D action game called. Balfaris with an awesome sci-fi action movie aesthetic with great pixel art and music, but the actual gameplay felt like something was missing, and I had to put it down. I have never heard of Balfaris. Yeah, there was some other discussion that happened on uh, on the Slack. Uh, apparently, wide consensus that the, there are awesome, that either the game entirely is awesome, or there are mm-hmm. awesome elements to the game. Ooh, I love this visual style. Uh, extremely colorful. It looks like a like a neon contra huh Ooh, yeah neat i learned about something new too bad that the gameplay is missing something <laughs> also didn't contra look like a neon contra oh uh, <laughs> it, go, it, it goes through phases honestly yeah this this is a much more neon uh contra than even the most neon of contras that i've seen um we need this contra <laughs> to be at least 10 percent more neon <laughs> uh Ben, if you want to split this one up and uh, pass it off, I will let you. Uh, but what does Julia say? Julia, well, it's funny because this is actually half of my answer. So Ooh. something will be split. Uh, Julia says Celeste music. Yeah, <laughs> the music in Celeste is really good. Agreed. Yeah. And uh, Dennis, round us out with, a, with, sorry, with Rookie. Sorry, I about said Rookie's answer. I uh, I should probably refresh refresh the page so I see Rookie's answer. Hmm. That'd be good. There we are. <clears throat> Rookie says a boy in his blob has such a great concept and some really creative transformations for the blob. The game could and should be amazing. It's a shame that the game plays sluggishly and nothing is signposted. The concept is so strong it's still somehow remembered fondly. Yeah, I mean. <sighs> It's remembered fondly in some regards, but I think that generally no conversation about it is complete. I mean, people usually talk about how inscrutable it is, like just that it Mm. is one of the most poorly explained games that has an awful lot actually to it. But, you know, it's just it kind of takes 
um, trial and error, life or life and death trial and error to figure out what does what. I, yeah. And I never played like the Wii update to it to know if it actually addressed those problems. The only thing I know about the Wii version of a boy and his blob is that it has a button that lets you hug your blob. Aw. Yeah. That's so sweet. So we, I, is, I know we have, can you pet the dog? Is there, can you hug the blob? <laughs> uh, I mean, it'd be a pretty simple uh, Twitter with just one post, but yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like uh, Can You Pet the Dog expands to cover all sorts of potential pets. Mm. So you're saying them. blobs are dogs? I'm saying most dogs are at least part blob. So if you think of the Venn diagram, uh, that's three blobs. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, uh, you, you, you left me behind there. Um, I'll do mine. Uh I can generally put forward like I, I I like the game, but like the only thing about about it. Okay, so I like Chrono Cross. I can I can mount a uh, um, a firmly felt but um, let's say unconvincing defense of its systems, its characters, its story. Um, you know, like that. But the one thing that I do enjoy, and sometimes I think, oh, maybe I just say I like this game um, because of the soundtrack, uh, is the soundtrack. Like, the music in Chrono Cross is um, one of the best soundtracks in any video game. And it rises so far above, um, in so you know, <laughs> it rises so far above because it is the one aspect of the game that I think is unassailably great. Mm-hmm. All right, so take that answer and replace it with uh, FTL, and that's mm. my answer. The second half of my answer. <laughs> oh, really? okay. I like. Don't get me wrong. I like the gameplay of FTL, but like the music is so good in that game, in my opinion. And yeah. So yeah. It and it's the same thing with like Celeste too. Celeste is, I think, more so of the answer where it's like I could take or leave the gameplay there. It's fine, and like mm-hmm. the story's fine, but like the music's really, really good. Yeah. It's, Mm-hmm. Same thing, uh, Night in the Woods. I like the story of Night in the Woods and the characters and the visual style too. It's just the play of Night in the Woods I don't like, but the but the music is one of those things of like, yeah, we can all agree that the music in this is extremely good. I don't yeah. remember there being any play in Night in the Woods. That's walking around and talking to people. That's that's about it. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, David, how about you? So I think the thing thing for me, I would say isn't so much like a part of the whole so much as it is a part that forgot the whole. Okay. Um, I think that um, Eve Online would be an amazing like crafting and economy system for a game. They just never actually added a game. Right, right. Hmm. Things, things to do, goal, you know, goal-oriented play, intrinsic goal-oriented play. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, how about you? Yeah, my answer is is more on the aesthetic side. I love the look and just overall idea behind Psychonauts. Mm. Um, but for whatever reason, I just bounced off the, the actual gameplay of that really hard. The actual gameplay um, is not very good. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I will go to bat for you on that one. It is, cool. Yeah, you know. It's 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 kind of a you know average 3D platformer, um, and I I think I came to it late enough that I had seen enough games do platforming right or enough better examples yeah. that it just it made it that much harder to accept um, the the shortcomings that it has on that front. Um, but I, I mean I love 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 the look of that game. Uh, yeah. Every single bit of it is dripping with personality. Yeah. No, good one. I think uh, I think people uh, can uh, sign up. People will want to uh, subscribe to your newsletter. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. So uh, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, participating in this. Thank you, Dennis, for putting it up. Uh, and uh, thank you, Aaron, for uh, uh, suggesting a question that inspired this one. If you would like to uh, participate in this in the future, you can go to uh, facebook.com slash the level podcast and watch for the prompts to go up on Monday afternoons. The end thought. 
Now it is time for the end boss, where we talk about uh, things that are happening in the world of video games that are exciting to us. Uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, one of my favorite games from the Super Nintendo is getting a uh, port, is getting a release on modern systems, uh, including PC, PS4, Switch, and Xbox One. Uh, Zombies Ate My Neighbors uh is a game that i have just a lot of experience with played it a ton specifically with my dad and my uncle and my brother uh did you guys you guys did this for waf didn't you? we did extremely early on i think it was like yeah, episode six of that. waf i mean that's how important it is like you know or like the earliest days of like waf it was like i made sure we got missed on there and i made sure we got zombies in my neighbors <laughs> is uh it just uh that's how that's how important it is to me uh this is a top-down shooter where you play as uh to, to uh, one of two kids like it's a, it can be a two-player game that's the most fun way to play it uh where you're going around and rescuing your neighbors from like uh like a smattering of like suburban areas and malls there are levels based on like you know gothic castles and stuff like that and you're rescuing them from like zombies and werewolves and all of these enemies that are pulled from you know late night monster movie kind of things super fun super super quirky uh it's it's one of the rare like non adventure games made by uh LucasArts and also a rare LucasArts game that is not like based on a previously existing franchise uh let's say uh, I mean, their adventure games were oftentimes original, but their action games were uh, oftentimes uh, based on other stuff. Just a great game that I am really excited that more people are going to be able to play. Uh, it's coming out on June 29th, along with its sequel, which is not as good because a different developer handled it, handled it, uh, Ghoul Patrol. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's being uh, put out, uh, I think, by Limited Run Games is helping to publish that. So rock on. I'm really excited. There's even going to be a, a, a physical edition uh, for limited oh, nice. runs. I may end up buying that uh, to put next. And oh, uh, this is the this is a port of the SNES version, not the worst Genesis version. Uh, it's worth saying because the Genesis version is real bad. Uh, <laughs> the I, I see they're adding a quick save system, mm -hmm. um, and then there's some other ancillary stuff. But it seems like they're kind of not touching the game that much, apart from that one big. Edition. Yeah, that's kind of de rigueur. So, putting in a like a quick save system or a rewind. Usually that happens. Yeah. So uh, with the addition of a, uh, a quick save system, was this like a Nintendo hard game? It's a it's a pretty hard game. Uh, honestly, it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, especially when you get past like I think there are like a hundred levels in it. If you get past like level thirty or something, it uh, it's real uh, it's real tough. Yeah, uh, quick saves will be welcome. Very cool. Yeah. Um. So I just I saw that today and I was like, yes. Anytime I can think of zombies at my neighbors is a good happy time. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Dennis. Uh. What's going? On? Why are people talking about Waluigi? <laughs> Why are you having these feelings towards Waluigi all of a sudden? I don't. I mean, I, I, I admire him as a uh, as, as a person who does great works. But what, like, why, why is he bubbling back up? I mean, the honest answer is I don't know, and that's part of what makes it so fun. Like Waluigi has always been the internet darling. Yeah. Um. Poor, poor left out kid. Um. That's actually awesome. Um, what I think the, the impressive thing about this story is that Nintendo seems to be really playing into that. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, there was a couple of pieces of Waluigi art released. One was for Mario golf, which has him in a dapper fedora and vest. Um, just, just looking awesome. Mm -hmm. And I would say his, his kind of the same brand of maniacal that we've seen him in art before. Yeah. Um, but the thing that really lit the internet on fire was a quick render of Waluigi that popped up as like a screensaver, essentially like a, a placeholder screen uh, on a Nintendo show. Yeah. Um, that is him. I, I don't even know how to describe this. I, I think I have to pull from America's next top model. It is Waluigi booty touching for his life. Yeah. Um, so yeah. anime knees together pose and just working it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Licking a rose too. The, yeah, yeah, with the with the cute profile and rose thing going on. Yeah. Uh, so this this uh you know it's it's fairly recent and I'm sure the fan art waves are coming like they weren't there before. Yeah, um, yeah. 
but it, it is the most self-aware uh, from Nintendo Waluigi uh, image that I have seen in a long time, and I am here for it. Yeah. Uh, so, I, oh, is this going to segue into the SNL skit? <laughs> I mean, no, I, I won't talk that up. Just there through. I, I even forget how it started. Can we it talk it probably, down? Yeah, <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can't. I can't watch it. It's it just. It's too awkward. I can't. I can't look at him. It's fucking cringe, and it's the second most rich person on the planet. And it, yeah. it's like it's just awkward. Yeah, uh, I just. I don't. I mean, they they put him. They put him in a room with a Luigi boner, and I'm okay with that. Mm. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd rather just focus on Waluigi and this coming up as part of a new uh, a new Mario sports game that's coming out pretty soon. Yeah, not the not 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 to steer us, but uh, there, there's just there's always a a, a rolling boil, a, a simmering of uh, Wa- Waluigi. Uh, like, I mean, what is the exact middle point between uh, sincere and ironic? <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I it... feel like simmering is the the correct verb for all things Waluigi. Yeah, I would, I would yeah. describe this image as scintillating. I don't know. Th- this guys. is the first time that I've seen people get explicitly horny for him, um, <laughs> which you is don't not do internet enough. Which is not, I mean, which is kind of surprising. Maybe it's just because I'm looking at this post and it has a whole bunch of a whole bunch of um, memes put together where people are calling attention to the to, to the booty popping um, uh, that, that 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 is going on. Uh, Better not awaken anything in me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, I'll tell you this. Yeah. I'm I'm calling it right now. Like this this level of awareness uh, coming from Nintendo to my mind, guarantees that there is a Waluigi game on the way. I don't know. Time, Waluigi and Smash are bust. All, yeah. the, all the love oh, for yeah. Waluigi doesn't matter if he's not put in a Smash game. Yeah. And that, that's fine, but I'm talking like own standalone game is coming. Yeah. You like, heard it here first. Waluigi I mean, and when's Smash. When's the last time they made a good uh, Wario game? It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Yeah. GameCube? Yeah. GameCube WarioWare? Oh, oh no! Yeah, I don't oh, yeah. mean WarioWare. I mean yeah. actual like platformer Wario. Yeah, the uh, it's, Game Boy territory. Yeah, yeah, like I think the Game Boy Advance one is the last one that I've heard like good things about. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I I could see like either a Waluigi version of that or like the evil version of the Mario and Luigi RPG. Oh yeah, sure, oh yeah. that'd be fun. Oh yeah, get uh get Treehouse to uh to do the localization on on that. That'd be good. Yeah. No, you you cracked it. <laughs> so uh, so expect that within the year. Uh, I <laughs> guarantee it. Uh, speaking, you can call, call, and complain if if it doesn't happen. Uh, <laughs> uh, speaking of RPGs, uh, what's going on with Yakuza, Ben? Yeah, I thought I'd bring this up since I've been playing the game recently. Uh, they announced today that they're doing two different paths for the Yakuza games for the combat systems. Um, so I didn't know this, but they have a game called Judgment, which they released previously, which is like a Yakuza spinoff. I'm yeah. new to this universe, so I didn't I didn't know any of this sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but they mentioned that the Judgment games are going to keep the previous combat system of the games, everything that was before uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Yeah, and the, the beat-em-up s- style. Yeah, and then the subsequent uh, sequels of like Yakuza Like a Dragon and that series is going to continue refining the uh, turn-based uh, combat system that they have. Yeah. Um, yeah. This isn't terribly surprising. Um, it's it's good that they are investing in building up the other uh, the other world, especially because the Yakuza series has so many entries in it now. It is probably pretty intimidating, you know? So yeah. like having this mechanical differentiator makes sense to me. Yeah, it yeah, no, it's interesting for me to just find out the backstory of this cuz since I'm coming to like a dragon as my first entry in the series, like everything's fresh and so it's weird to not see this as the normal thing. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. You you never knew anything different. Mhm. Nice. Um and David, what you got? So, this is pretty just kind of a stupid thing, but it entertained me. Um, in the new Pokemon Snap, apparently, uh, apparently there's a little calip- caterpillar thing called a, a Wurmple. Yeah, uh, it's like the Caterpie replacement from a couple generations after 
Caterpie. Exactly. Yeah. And I guess um, at some point you can get it to kind of roll over on its back and, uh, you know, kind of roll around for you. And someone took a picture of that that just presents it as just this caterpillar, like, lying on its back, staring, like, thousand-yard stare up into the <laughs> sky. Yeah. And so it has become kind of the the uh, current meme, uh, uh, you know, expressing our current uh, world and people's reaction to it. I mean, th- th- there is always just, like, a through line of depression memes, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and th- this, this, this worm pe- is it Wormpole or Wormpy? Uh, Wormpole. Um, Wormpole, yeah. yeah uh, just kind of like laying out flat, you know, catatonic, like Cameron from uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off uh, is uh, hashtag relatable. <laughs> I, 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 it sounds like I'm being derisive of this, but like some of the memes are pretty funny. I shared one in the Discord before I saw that you posted the story uh, el- uh, elsewhere in the list of stuff that we uh, that we look at. Um, but uh, of just a, it's a hand drawn fan art of Wormpole laying there, and then it does its four panels, and the middle two panels are like zoom ins, and then at the uh, at the closest zoom in, it's black and white, and there's like a helicopter uh, superimposed <laughs> over it, so it's like he's having a nom flashback. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah i saw that one yeah yes. but the thousand yard stare is really good mm-hmm. yeah meme heavy week it really has been yeah also psa if you're listening to this on re- day of release subnautica just came out today so you should go play that uh the below zero, uh, yeah. below zero. will your, yes. will your zero. uh ben will your travel interfere with your ability to sequester yourself for uh below zero so it comes out Friday. I'm going to definitely play it on the weekend. I'm getting my vaccine on Saturday, so I'm planning on just feeling shitty all day Sunday and oh, playing that game. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah, there's worse plans. Yeah. Neat. Excited. I want to watch you play that game. Yeah, there's Ooh. worse plans, like not getting your vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> I, so today is my emergence day. Uh, I am fu- I am full <laughs> I am fully vaxxed, which is good. Uh, I, what happens if you see your shadow when you go outside? Um, it, it means I'm never going to go outside again, which is how it was going to be anyway, uh, because this past year has been traumatic. Uh, no, uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I my, my my immune system is now fully up uh, has received the firmware update, uh, but the uh, but the pinball uh, barcade kind of place how it go. Uh, it's only up on on Thursdays and weekends now, so I would uh, need to go later on in the week. So I mm-hmm. I planned on having something to report from that, but oh well. Yeah, womp womp. Womp womp. Um, how do you guys feel about uh, buttoning it up? Let's button. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, listening. I about said tuning in, but it's not uh, 1962. Um, (laughs) Yeah, uh, level number 371. Uh, You know what to do to help us out. Uh, Patreon.com slash DougFeedTV. Facebook.com slash The Level Podcast. Uh, Tell your friends. Talk about us on Twitter or social media. And most of all, uh, tune in uh, next week Uh, would be the big one. Is there anything I'm forgetting? Don't think Wait, so. What's what's the big one next week? What? What's oh, there's the, the no. Next oh week? no, there, there, there's there, uh, there's no big one. I mean, it'll be episode three seventy two next week. I don't have any plans, but the big one you is you know always you coming understand. back. understand? Yeah, you don't understand the significance of three seventy two. Yeah, fucking. <laughs> I am honestly trying to think of one. <laughs> yeah. No, I would just say the, the the big one. If you're listening this week, we want we want you to stick around. You know. Yeah, come hang. Yeah. Um, I'm not forgetting to put my cat because Greta is like right on my lap, which is fun. Aww. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I've been Cole Ross. Uh, you can watch me stream on Twitch at Duck TV. I've been Dennis Furia. You can find me on Instagram at Deck of Wonders. I'm David Bryce Smith. I've been Ben Merkel. And stick around for some titles. Let's see here. Um, I've got one. 
Uh, it's one that I said, which is lame, but a big gyre of molars. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the tooth fairy thing. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, the tooth, yeah, island out in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, who, who, who's got what Dennis, what you got? Yeah, I've got, I've got just one as well. I wrote down the most neon of Contras. Okay. David. Um, I had a couple as promised I had, it's the PS five. That's the problem. (laughs) Um, I had most dogs or at least part blob. And okay. meme heavy week. Okay. We're all over the place this week. Yeah, what I just you got, had, Ben? I just had one. I had Resident Evilly, and I spelled it with capital I's on either side of the L so that you could make it like Resident Evil 8 if you wanted to. <laughs> Are there any umlauts? Nah. Uh, wait, wait. Um. Oh, oh. Oh, evil. I'll, I'll like it's a it. Resident Evil game. Yeah. Yeah. Has the quality of being Resident Evil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the ones that got. <laughs> Auto correct. No, I think it was not happy with my yeah. spelling. Yeah. Evil. Okay. Uh, the ones that got laughs were uh, it's the PFs five. That's the problem. And a big gyre of molars. I like, uh, I like having gyre in one of our titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah gyre and gimbal level. in the wave. Yeah, we have been a gyreless podcast up until this point. I know it's taken a long time <laughs> to get the word gyre in. Yeah, but at least we got it before three seventy two, which is the point at which it becomes legally impossible to use gyre on the podcast. Right, right. Our mm-hmm. our silence has been deafening up to this point. Mm-hmm. Re gyres. I'm. <laughs> I'm just I'm just waiting for uh episode four twenty. Oh yeah. So just you gonna co- blaze up, dude? Come on, just completely blitzed on edibles. My problem when I get high is that I can't find words, which is a problem <laughs> when you uh do a podcast and words are your currency. Yeah. My pro my problem is I have panic attacks and oh, feel no. paranoid. So <laughs> oh, awful. <laughs> Weed does not work with me. Not a good feeling. No. That's why you gotta stick to cocaine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh. It's like coffee plus plus. No, don't do cocaine. I, I don't do cocaine. That sounds terrible. <laughs> oh god, awful. Expensive habit too. Jeez. Yeah. No, really no upside. Mm-mm. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm gonna go. Yeah, have a good night, guys. Yeah, take care, everybody. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, uh guess, safe safe travels, Ben. Good good uh good luck with your vex. Yeah, and then cold. It takes two next Monday. Yeah, let's give it a shot. All right. Thumbs up. Have a good week, guys. Later. Peace. Bye. Bye. Bye.